and the sun's elevation in the sky. So you can see two different pictures here. You've got one, obviously it's winter time, there's snow on the ground um, and it's snowing and it's dark. And another one, the sun is shining and the apple tree has got lovely red apples on it and there's plenty of flowers and bloom and grass at the bottom and a blue sky. Um, so we know we have different seasons. We really have two distinct seasons that we know are so different. We have winter and we have summer. In between, of course, we have spring and autumn, which are fairly similar. And this is what causes them. Okay, this is the sun in the middle here. <clears throat> here you have the earth at the four um, seasons. Okay, so this whole time that it takes to orbit the sun is 365 and a quarter days. The earth rotates around the sun or orbits the sun in an anti-clockwise direction. And it also rotates on its own axis in an anti-clockwise direction in each case. There's a very important feature here which is important for you to understand. And that is that it's always tilted at the same angle. So you can see there, in each case, the tilt is always at 23 and a half degrees. Now, that doesn't make a huge amount of difference when the Earth's in this position and this, this position. I've drawn a yellow line on here from the sun, uh, like a cross uh, across the sun. If you take that line up to the Earth, you can see that it's going to hit somewhere around the middle of the Earth, in other words, at the equator. And here's the same, only it's hitting in around the back of the Earth that we can't see, this part that's facing us is meant to be in darkness because this is obviously night time. So it's hitting around the other side of the earth um, around here, but it's also hitting it in the middle. But look at the big difference at the two sides. If you look over here, you can see there's the sun's light coming out from the centre, but it's actually hitting the earth beneath the equator. That means that the southern hemisphere there is getting more sunlight at that time of the year. If you look at this side, when the Earth has gone six months later over to this side, you can see that the sun's light is actually hitting the Earth in the northern hemisphere more. Now, obviously, all of the side of the Earth is still getting sunlight, and so is this, this half of the Earth. But it's much more concentrated in the northern hemisphere during our summer and in the southern hemisphere during our winter. So when we have summertime, the southern hemisphere has winter. When we have winter time, the southern hemisphere has a summer. So given that we are over here, you maybe can't see that too well, but we are here. When we rotate into the um, sun's light, we rotate in and we actually spend far longer in the sun's light all that time and round the other side and far shorter in the darkness during our summertime. And that's why during our summertime we would have about 18 hours daylight, maybe more sometimes, and only about five or six hours darkness in our summertime, in the peak of our summertime. The opposite is true in the wintertime. It's the southern hemisphere, places very far south in the southern hemisphere, who will have lovely long summer days, but very short nights. Now, there's a very strange thing happens though if you live within the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. If you live within the Arctic Circle, which is away up here, during our summertime when you rotate into the sun's light, you don't rotate out of it, you just continue rotating in the sun's light. So people in the Northern Hemisphere in the Arctic Circle have 24 hours daylight during their summertime. Of course, the problem is during the winter time, when they rotate into the sun's light, they don't rotate into the sun's light. When they rotate, they don't ro rotate into the sun's light. They have 24 hours darkness. And obviously the southern hemisphere is opposite. People in the Antarctic Circle, or the Antarctic Circle, just has 24 hours daylight. But in the winter time for them, they have 24 hours darkness. The sun's elevation. <clears throat> the elevation of the sun is how high it is in the sky. During autumn and springtime, this middle line represents how high it is in the sky. 
But because it's much more concentrated us in us and on us in the summertime, then we ha- see it much higher in the sky. So the elevation is much higher in the sky. But in the winter time, it is much lower in the sky. We call this the elevation of the sun. And so the sun's path from east to west, as we look at it, is much higher in the sky in the summer, but much lower in the winter time. We perceive the sun as moving from east to west because we are actually rotating in an anticlockwise direction, and that's from west to east. So we say the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Now, the result of that is very strange because that actually means that we have different concentrations of sunlight during our summer and our winter. This diagram shows the concentration of sunlight on the northern hemisphere during our summer. And you can see the sun is falling on this area and this line represents that area down here. But at the same time as that's happening to us, the sun's light is much less intense in the southern hemisphere and it falls over a much wider area. But because it falls over a wider area, it's much less intense and you can see it's spread up over over a much larger area. And therefore, they're experiencing winter while we experience summer. This next diagram also shows the concentration of the sun's light during the daytime. In the early morning, the sun is spread over a wide area and it's not so hot. You've always heard that whenever you go to hot um, climates that you should stay out of the sun in the middle of the day. The reason is because the sun is very high in the sky and the sunlight is concentrated on the one area and therefore it's much more intense and much hotter. In the evening time, the sun is over the other side. Again, the sun's rays are much lower, hitting the earth over a much wider area and therefore it's cooler in the evening time. This is also the reason we have much longer shadows in the evening time as well.